Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Prax. As you can see behind me is my fallout shelter. I'm just finishing up work and getting all the systems working in there so that if we ever needed to use it, it would be available to us. At this point, what I'm doing is just kind of packing it full of things that we might want to have if we had to be in there. Uh, in this box right here are some items that are going to be headed in there, just so it's not a distraction to the whole video. I'll let you read it. It's a metal lunchbox that says hangry on it. I thought that was kind of funny. I was able to pick this up pretty inexpensively. I think it was like $9 or something like that. Um, nine, I think it was $9 for two of them, actually. Uh, the, the aluminum tape that I've, I, I'm using to seal up all the seams on it, uh, again, you know, really inexpensive. Uh, what's inside here, however, uh, you know, it would not be easy uh, or cheap to get these things that are inside here uh, today. Uh, there's two Geiger counters, uh, you know, uh, a set of uh, AA batteries, AAA batteries, and, and uh, the manuals for uh, both of the Geiger counters. I've got these in here because, you know, they're sensitive electronics, and I want to make sure that if there was ever some kind of electromagnetic pulse, they're able to survive it, and we could use it if we needed them. What we're going to talk about in this video is uh, the idea of costs of things. You know, I, I mentioned if you tried to buy a Geiger counter today, you're really going to get kind of hosed, but not necessarily. Uh, a lot of the price gouging that you see going on, I don't like... I don't really actually like to use the word price gouging. I think it's, uh, you know, that's the way capitalism works is when there is a lot of something, the cost of that thing or the price of that thing goes down. And when there's not as much of that available and the demand is high, um, you know, the price goes up. That's kind of the way our system works. That's the way um, nature works. Uh, I'm not sure you may hear flying by over my head uh, while I do this video, uh, uh, Canada geese. And, uh, you know, Canada geese are responding to uh, kind of capitalistic pressures as they migrate uh, back and forth. Uh, you know, they, uh, they will spend their winters uh, down south where there's uh, plenty of food. And then when it is summertime, uh, they will migrate up to the north where there is uh, lots of food available and not a lot of demand because, you know, there aren't as many I can hear some right now, uh, because there's uh, you know there's fewer birds, so they're kind of you know migrating to different places, so they can get that kind of like uh, that cost ratio. Oh, they're flying right over my head, literally. There they go. So they can get that kind of cost ratio of you know being able to get stuff for cheaper, and cheaper in nature means you don't have to fight as many other animals to get it. Um, so right now we're seeing a lot of. Uh, you know, situations where, you know, the costs of things are going up. And I think a lot of uh, people have just kind of gotten used to it. And, you know, it's a, you know, it's a punch to the stomach whenever you, uh, you know, have to pay more for something than you used to have to pay. Um, and I think to some degree, a lot of us accept it too uh, easily. And by accept it, what I mean is that we assume that there's no other option. And I'm going to give you a, a, an example of something that happened to me over the last week. And I hope that it's uh, helpful for you. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, working on building this homestead for the past couple of years and uh, this year was always a year that we we're figuring you know we'll, we'll have finished everything else up and I'd really like to try uh, raising chickens it's something I've never done before I have a lot of friends who have done it and from what I always hear is that it's surprisingly easy so I've been interested in starting that for a while now this year it's kind of a rough year because uh, you know the price of it, uh, all sorts of uh, products related uh, to uh, the chickens has gone up in price from their food to like you know their feeders and you know the water uh, uh, just, uh, the water kind of trays that like you know uh, distribute their water out and all that. Uh, yeah, the uh, the cost of lumber to build uh, a chicken coop is like you know it's at least double what it used to be. Uh, and in particular, uh, there was a device I've been looking at. Uh, it's a uh, solar activated light that will open up their coop so when it's morning they can come out and then it'll close the door at the end of the day. Um, I think that's kind of a cool idea. Uh, at least the opening in the morning thing because like, like sometimes it's cold and I just don't want to go outside. You know in the morning. Morning, I'm doing something else or you know I'm feeling under the weather or just like you know for whatever reason I thought that was kind of like a cool idea you know it would let the chickens out and I wouldn't have to physically be there now uh, I've been a big fan of Amazon for a while I, I, I was I was using Amazon like back before people even knew what Amazon was and like I'd say like uh, you know Amazon just used to sell books that's how they started and I you know would buy, buy books from them because it was a great way of you know getting whatever you wanted you didn't have to go to the bookstore and like you know wonder if they had it you could just go online and you know and get it and have it sent to you. I thought that was great. And then when they started uh, offering other things, you know, people thought I was like like some kind of a weirdo. It's like they're like, you know, why? You, so you just go online and you order this thing. It's like, you know, don't you enjoy like getting in your car and driving to the store and going into the store and looking through the store to see if they have it and then waiting in line to check out and then you know taking this thing. You know, maybe you got it, maybe you didn't, maybe it was in stock at the store, maybe it wasn't. Then driving home and you know, don't you miss all that? 
No, I don't. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of Am Amazon's kind of becoming a monopoly. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of that. But uh, I mean, it's super convenient, and as a single parent, especially, it's like I don't, I don't know how I could, you know, get things done if I wasn't able to just kind of like do my ordering, you know, in the evenings. So anyway. I was uh, going online to see if I could get one of these solar activated doors so that when we get our chickens, if we can get our chickens again, it's not the best year. We've got like these new bird uh, yeah, influenzas kind of coming in. In fact, I probably just got, uh, you know, it got like air dropped on me from the Canadian geese that just uh, flew over. Um, you know, it, it, it's a difficult year. And uh, when I went to get, look for these doors, uh, the, the price for them was $200. Two hundred dollars dollars for these little, uh, you know, solar activated electric doors. And I'm thinking, man, you know, I know it's a specialty item. And oftentimes if you're buying some kind of like a niche thing, you know, the price is higher because it's not mass produced as much. But I'm like, you know, man, $200 for this little device seems kind of steep. You know, um, it seemed like more of like a $30 to $50 kind of thing. You know, $50 maybe because like, again, it's a niche item and, you know, there's not a lot of it being sold. So, you know, maybe it'd be a little bit higher. But, you know, it didn't seem like there, were, there was that much to it. And $200 just seemed kind of crazy. Now... I almost just thought, well, it's like, well, that's what it is. And I guess I just can't afford it because it's like $200 for a door. It's like, I guess, you know, on those mornings when it's cold out, I'm just going to, you know, throw on my slippers and, and go out and I'll let the chickens out anyway. I thought it was just, you know, it's out of your price range, $200. You know, the price of everything has gone up and it's just not accessible to you. Well, you know, I thought about it and I did uh, some other searching at, you know, some other uh, sort of country living stores and things like that. And I found out that the price on Amazon was $200 the price at pretty much everywhere else was like 35 bucks. In fact, I ended up finding a, a place, uh, it was 30, $33.50 for the same exact door. Um, and that's what I want to talk about in this video is I know we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, prices of all sorts of things going up and we're being kind of acclimated to the idea that, uh, you know, every time you buy something, it's going to be like, you know, a, pr a crazy kind of price gouging. And it almost makes you vulnerable to that, um, to that happening to you, when you anticipate something is going to happen, uh, it becomes more uh, acceptable to you. That's what people talk about with uh, you know government government messaging and things. And I I, I don't subscribe completely to these types of ideas where uh, you know the government puts out the idea in movies that there's going to be an alien invasion. They're they're priming us, getting us ready for it. So if it ever happens, we're kind of like oh yeah, we, well we've seen that many times uh, uh, you know in Hollywood or whatever. Um, you know I, I I don't think that there's a concerted effort by government to do that kind of stuff. Uh, but but certainly that is a real thing. The more that that you expect something to happen, uh, the more when it, you know, if it, when it does happen or if it seems to happen, you're going to accept that that is the reality. So as you're going out there and you're looking for d different things, if you see something at a high price, you know, don't just uh, accept that, you know, do some other searches, uh, you know, and look at some other options because, you know, you might be able to find, uh, you know, an incredible cost savings just by uh, not accepting the fact that, well, you know, I guess this thing is just super expensive and I either have to pay that much or I'm not going to get it because, you know, you could find something that was two hundred dollars and you get it for thirty three fifty that's it i hope you find this helpful if you have any tips for uh, different types of uh, uh you know websites or different uh, uh avenues that people can check uh please leave them down in the comments below i know that a lot of the people that uh you know watch this channel would love to hear your thoughts on different places where you can get uh materials and you know maybe you're not going to get price gouged as much and if even if none of the viewers of this channel care I know I do, so I would love to hear from you guys. That's it. Good luck and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.